Is there plasma in a plasma TV? Yes, there is. The bigger question is, what exactly is plasma and how does it help you to watch Strictly Come X Factor out of here in glorious high definition? Well, the technology behind the television barely evolved for the first 60 years of its existence. It relied on the cathode ray tube, basically a device that could fire out a stream of electrons onto the back of a fluorescent screen. The parts of the screen being hit by electrons would then glow, and the beam of electrons would run across the screen in a series of parallel lines multiple times each second. This happened so quickly that our eyes, looking from the other side of the screen, see a steady image. Early televisions had only one of these electron guns, meaning their images were in what was called black and white. Actually green and grey for anyone old enough to remember. But then colour television was invented, giving a new best thing since to replace sliced bread. And that was by using three separate streams of electrons to create red, blue and yellow, which could then be combined to enable people to finally make sense of televised snooker. But as our appetite for bigger TVs and sharper images developed, so the humble cathode ray tube screen started to hit problems. Televisions were already heavy, electricity-hungry things, but as the size of screens increased, they had to become deeper as well, so that the CRT tube could reach each corner of the screen. The number of pixels that a CRT could support was also limited by the need for it to scan the whole screen 50 or 60 times a second. This was clearly a problem in need of a solution. The concept for the plasma display had been invented as long ago as the 1930s, with a single colour plasma display being produced in the 1960s and 1970s, especially for early computers. The principle is very simple. Instead of using a beam of electrons to create lines, the plasma screen uses what are, in effect, tiny, quick-acting fluorescent light cells to form a picture. In a modern colour plasma display, each pixel has three of these fluorescent lights, one in each primary colour, and fires them intelligently to create the desired colour in the picture. LCD televisions, the sworn enemy of plasma systems, according to the bloke in the telly shop, use individual LCD shutters for each pixel to create a similar effect. But what is plasma? A plasma is basically just an electrically conductive gas that contains both free-flowing ions, positively charged atoms, and electrons, which are negatively charged. If you introduce more electrons by putting a voltage through this gas, then these will begin to collide with atoms, knocking off other electrons and turning them into ions. Then, negatively charged particles will start to move towards the positively charged area, and vice versa. This causes the atomic equivalent of a motorway pileup, with particles smashing into each other and, or with the xenon and neon gases used in plasma screens, releasing photons, or light, as we'd call it. Most of this light is ultraviolet, which is invisible, but by coating those tiny cells with phosphoric material, this can be changed into visible light when it hits the side of the cells which it does a lot. A modern high-definition display with 1,920 pixels across and 1,080 up has over 2 million individual pixels, each being fired dozens of times a second to produce different colours. The result is that plasma displays are far more shallow than the old CRTs. You can stick them on the wall, but also that they can be scaled up simply by adding more pixels and enough computing firepower to run them. Plasma TVs have been produced in sizes up to 152 inches, that's the diagonal measurement across the screen, large enough for even the most discerning rap star to watch himself waxing misogynistic in glorious high definition. But now settle down with the Blu-ray release of Ghostbusters and remind yourself how important it is to never, ever cross the streams. Now, if you haven't already gone what my mother would have called square-eyed through watching all this stuff about television, why not go over to Number Hub and find out just how many pixels can be squeezed into the world's largest TV. Do that by clicking... here?